Psalm 33 and verse 10. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God, for yet another opportunity to stand before your people and, and to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence in this place. We acknowledge you. You are good. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love and your salvation. God, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking, oh God, your anointing upon my life right now to teach and to preach your holy word. I believe I receive. I pray for those that would hear your word, Father that they may not only hear, but do your word. That God, the, what the word that comes forth, God, would manifest in each and every one of their lives. Now I come against every foe to faith. Any spirit that would try to hinder us, we rebuke you right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for good success in this endeavor. And those that agree with that prayer, say amen. amen. You can have your seats, praise God. The counsel, the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to nothing. Amen. The Lord makes the devices of the people of none effect. What does that mean? That means to me that I don't have to be moved by what anything try to do against me because God when it says the counsel of the Lord it says that God has already spoken a certain word over my existence and as long as I fall in line with his word can't nothing they do to harm me amen so I want to give you a simple a title today maybe you can work with this don't be disturbed don't be disturbed we used to sing a song when I was in a, a vacation Bible school and Sunday school and, you know, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. And then when we got a little older, we, I think we added some stuff to it. We said stuff like Jesus gave it to me and I shall not be moved. Jesus gave it to me. I shall not be moved. Jesus. That, see, we say it more than one time because we, because you know, we, we making sure devil get your hands off mine. Jesus gave it to me. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Amen. Perhaps today you might be facing uh, some difficulties in your life. Amen. You may be facing some trouble in your life, amen, that somebody else uh, has caused you. Somebody perhaps willfully plotted against you. Somebody might have plotted to do you harm, amen. Somebody might have, to plot, might have plotted, amen, glory to God, to, to do something to, to, to increase their, their finances and decrease yours, amen, amen. They may be trying to uh, mess your business up, mess your home up, mess with your children, or even mess with your marriage. But today, we have a word of encouragement. Yeah. Amen. God said that he would bring the plans of those people to nothing. Yeah. Now, I know somebody just pulled check on me and said, we ain't supposed to be fighting people. We're dealing with principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. I'm in total agreement with you, but let's face it. Some of them principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness are high. They're in, they, they are, they are walking around inside of people. 
Amen. Amen. Yes. And I'm here to tell somebody, glory to God, that God is going to bring, amen, that what they try to do against you to nothing. Don't know who I'm talking to, glory to God, but if it's for you, receive it. Yes. Amen, glory to God. God has, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Yes. It's cold in here. Turn the fans off or something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Call you Mr. Freeze. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> you know, I'm, just, I'm trying to preach. All of a sudden, I'm cold. And I'm here. I'm on the internet and everything. Amen. I, I just feel led to tell somebody. I don't know who it is. Something's been coming after you, but God, God's going to cancel Christmas on that one. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. See, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen, somebody. When you make God your stronghold in the time of trouble, amen, nobody, nothing can overcome you, amen. It don't matter how powerful they are in the natural sense. The odds are in your favor and in my favor because we trust in the Lord. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. See, see, the enemy may think that they've got the edge over you. But the deal is God, somebody say God, God. is on your side. Yes. And so therefore you have the advantage. Y'all yes. ain't gonna help me today. I'm gonna preach this. Amen. You are going to eventually triumph over this trouble. Remember that dream I told y'all I had. Once I got that junk out my way, all them folks who were standing on the the side of the, of the path. What I felt in my spirit was those was all the individuals all my life that tried to determine me, that tried to limit me, that tried to hinder me. But because I st stayed on that straight, the path was straight, it wasn't crooked, because I stayed on that straight path. At the end, whoever was at the end of that road, they made an announcement, you come forth now. A amen, somebody. And, and I told you, first I was getting it just for myself, but under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I believe God was speaking that to all of us. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I was studying, uh, involved in the, uh, the children's uh, Sunday school books. I was looking at that this morning. Well, yeah, I was looking at it this morning and last night, actually last night. And, and something jumped out on me. You want me to do it? Yes. Let's do this. Somebody say, won't he do it? And, and, and it was about the three Hebrew boys. You know, Shaq, Rack, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, I'm going to let you know, I'm going to do the Sunday school part, but then we're going to go a little deeper, too. And, and, and the thing was, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he had made this, 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 uh, this statue. They said it was like eight stories tall, and real wide. And uh, they said he, perhaps he, he gleaned that image from when Daniel had their dream about the statue, but the statue that, that Daniel saw only had a golden head and it, the other parts of it was made out of different other materials and the feet was made of clay. Amen. And so I, I believe what Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar was trying to do was say, I'm not I'm not going to crumble. My kingdom is not going to crumble because the feet was made. Out, I, it, so he made the whole thing out of gold. And then they came up with this idea that anybody and they, they had all these musicians set in place and everything. And when you heard the sound of, of the music, you had to bow down to this, this, this statue. Well, Shaq, Rack, Meshach and Abednego, they didn't bow down. But then there were some haters. Come on, somebody. You know, you got to watch who you who you let get too close to you. There were some haters. And what the haters did, the haters went and snitched. Amen. They snitched. They snitched to the king. And see, see, see jealousy is something else. See, because you have to understand, uh, uh, these Shaq, Rack, Meshach, and Abednego, they were actually exiles. They were, they were involved in the Babylonian exile. They were exiled from Israel, amen, over to Babylon. Huh? And, 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 and the thing is, they had been given a position of prestige. So these people that snitched on them, they was jealous. They was jealous. See, Patrick, everybody don't want to see you succeed. Huh? 
Some folk always try to throw a monkey wrench into your operation. Come on, somebody. And so they told on him. And so the king asked him, he said, hey, come here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, is it true that you didn't bow down? And you know, the thing is, uh, <laughs> they weren't scared. Hey, Amen. Let me see, find exactly what they said, because that spoke to me. They told him, uh, they, I mean, Daniel chapter three, they, they said, uh, they said, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful. I like that. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Amen. Come on, somebody. In other words, we know who you are, but we know whose we are. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We, 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 you know, we know, we realize you're the king. But we belong to the king. You are a king. We belong to the king. A amen, somebody. They say we are not careful. It does not disturb us to answer you in this matter. We're not going to hide from you. We're not going to run from you. We're not going to duck away from you. We're going to answer. We're going to face you straight head up. And we're going to answer you straight to your face. We are not careful. We're not filled with anxiety. We ain't scared. Come on, somebody. We're not timid. We're going to we gonna talk to you. We men, too. Uh-oh. Anybody ever had to go there? I'm a man, too. All right. We, we, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Verse 17 says of Daniel chapter 3, if it be so, Daniel chapter 3, verse 17. Amen. I can hear when I do, you're trying to get... The, Got you, got you, got you. Gracias. If it be so, he, they said, our God. Now, we, we know who your God is. You didn't put that statue up there. You got them people bowing down to that. But our God, whom we serve, he is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand yes. O king now that's deep yes. they went to the furnace but then they twit they went and turned talk, and, and you ain't about nothing either <laughs> hey yeah. that's what they said yeah. huh and still acknowledging O king but if not this is where we got to go to but if not let me tell you something. Be it known unto thee. See, Sister Melissa, she was ready for her class. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Don't be disturbed. The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar got mad. It says he was full of fury. When you're full of fury, that means ain't nothing, ain't nothing else good there. You totally up. You are. Woo. -hoo. You know, they in the cartoon, there's steam coming out. Your, huh? It says in the form of his visage changed. Now, I, I guess his face changed. Mm hmm. Changed against Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Therefore, it says he spake and commanded that they should heat this furnace one seven times more than it was want to be heated. <laughs> when it says want to be heated, he took it beyond its operational specifications. Come on, somebody. Huh? And the Bible says that he went and got some mighty men, some strong men that was in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Amen. Then the Bible says, then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, their leggings, their socks, their hosen and their hats. And, come on, somebody. And, and their other garments and were cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And then it said, because the king's command was urgent. In other words, it, 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 
wanted it done quickly. Huh? The furnace was, and the furnace was exceeding hot. Past when they say exceeding hot, it was hotter than the, the, the needle. If it had a needle on it, the temperature gauge, it was pegged. It was stuck. You know what I'm saying? Somebody walk up to me tapping on the thing trying to get it to come. Now it was stuck. It was exceeding hot. It says the flame of the fire. When they opened the door, the flame came out and burnt the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> see, see, that's a word right there. What they're telling you is that person or those individuals who are trying to do dirt on you, it's going to get done on them. Yeah. Now, some folks say, I don't like you preaching like that there. Hey, I, I've been there and done that. I didn't had I didn't had a job. Glory to God. Where folk tried to I mean I didn't sold my got rid of I mean cashed in my four hundred one k, moved my whole family in a in a, 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 a well a U-Haul truck and moved up from San Diego you know all the way up to you know Corona and get to the job the first day and these folks was racist to the max. I said, Oh God, what am I gonna do? I didn't I don't have no more money. Come asking me for a high school diploma. I was 30 some years old. I said, Lord, what is going on? And then they sent me out there with this guy who had like a, 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 a you know, I don't want to be like a Nazi haircut. Straight bald on the side and just little whiskers on just a little bit on top. He driving me to downtown L.A to this site, and they didn't do, the way they told me I had to dress to do, get this job, I'm wearing a suit jacket and stuff, and we go up in this dungeon. Cobwebs and spiders, and the brothers told me, I don't like insects. Thank God for Brother John. <laughs> Brother John then got me away from a few black widows in this day. Got me way up in there, and, I'm, and this man gonna tell me, he, he gonna show me the finer things in life. Talking about, I'm, I'm ready to go home, and he, but I'm in his car. He talking about driving me around somewhere in L.A. to get some pork chops. You know why he was going with that. He's going to go to get some pork chops. There's got to be some place around to get some pork chops. I said, Lord Jesus, help me. Help me with this, Lord. You got to help me. I, I didn't move my whole family up here. Make a long story short, they tried to get rid of me. First, they tried to get rid of this other guy. Filipino friend of mine, Julius, just come to work one morning and that same guy just opened his mouth and said, Julius is always late. I'm like, what? He said, Julius is always late for work. I said, you a lie. He ain't never late. You know what he did? He laughed. In other words, the enemy going to use him to sow a rumor. To sow a rumor. And then everybody else get to saying, yeah, Julius be late. Julius. And then they get to corporate, then they get rid of Julius. I said, Julius is never late. I said, you need to stop that. Make a long story short, I end up running that office. Oh, yeah. They got rid of the manager because he, he didn't control them. All them people hating on me. And we'll see the deal is when you're in business, all you got to do is be good. I was good at what they, they couldn't. You see. It, on, on, on surface value, on, on face value, get rid of him. He's the odd man out. Problem. Y'all can't fix nothing and I fix it all. Huh? So I became needed. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then corporate found out that I was able to fix stuff. They said, we're going to send these. Th <laughs> I ran the office until I, until I was time to until I wanted to leave. And then I then and when I went and got a new job, I called up, I told the manager about Julius and got him in the same company I was in. Amen. Amen. But the ones who threw him in the furnace, it backfired. Uh oh, I'm picking up on, on, on Jervis right now. It backfired. What they try to do to you is gonna backfire. Amen, somebody. It's gonna backfire. Y'all know what backfire mean? Yes. Glory to God. They're going to get hit with what they tried to hit you with. Right. It's going to backfire. Yes. Praise God. Yeah, 
Praise God. Praise God. So they stood their ground. I don't want to go into the deep stuff because I got some more preaching to do. But when they said we are not careful, they were basically saying we know who we are. We know who we belong to. Elder Patterson, we know we have a covenant with our God. We know we have a covenant with the true and the living God. We know that. Now, hold on. I'm in trouble. <laughs> when I was reading the Sunday school lesson, it said, Satan comes to tempt you, but God comes to test you. It's a tragedy to, to have a faith that has never been tested. So when it's time for it to work, you ain't even tested it yet. Oh, God, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Every time I work for this production, this company, for electronic company producing this certain item. But before it went out the door, we didn't let the assemblers assemble it and the inspectors inspect how beautiful it was without testing it. We hooked that thing up to some power. And we put an input to it to see what the output was and we adjusted it and we took it through all of this extreme of its of, of its what it's, it's what you know what a design of you know what I'm saying what it was designed to do before we put it out the door some folk glory to God hallelujah the reason stuff is going kind of slow in your life because you backing up off the test you, you ain't hearing me Last Saturday, we had a test. There's no 15 passenger van. What are you going to do? It's at night. I could barely see my eyes. I'm blurry. I'm driving that truck. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Clarence. I did not want to drive that 15 passenger van back home. Especially after I went over that bridge going from the 15 to the 10. That thing, they crazy, making that thing way up there and all that angle like that there. You driving, that, the only thing you can see is the edge. Way up. I said, Lord, I, 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 I tell you, I was doing 35 miles, I was creeping. And if, and if I was white, my knuckles was red. I had that steering wheel, y'all. Woo, Jesus. We were tested. And tempted. See, that's the problem. There's a it's a test from God. But if you don't act right in the test, it becomes a temptation from the devil. Yeah. They don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. See, the test is whether you're going to hold on to my word. Right. The test is whether you're going to stay in faith. Yeah. The temptation is to get out of faith and abort the promise. I told somebody the other day, I said, your words is powerful. Keep saying, keep speaking right. You got powerful words. As long, oh, that, that's what I'm supposed to say. I'm supposed to, I got this other point I'm supposed to make real quick. As long as you don't change. I was reading this, this other article. I forgot who wrote it. I think it was Joel Osteen. I'm going to give him credit today. He was talking about this guy that was a war, war, was a, a, a military pilot. And then, uh, after he got out the, the military, he was he would train pilots, and he would train the people to uh, to uh, to pay attention to the instruments. I'm all right, y'all. I just ain't ate today. Y'all bear with me. I'll be all right. He said you gotta pay close attention to the instruments. He says, and these guys they they be always want to be looking out. They always want to see out. He said, I'm telling you, you gotta learn how to believe and trust your instruments. He said, one day I was training this one pilot to fly. He says, and all of a sudden we came and we ran into a real bad storm. He says, and you couldn't see out the windows. He said, the guy freaked out. He said, you know what I did? 
You know how cars have that, that thing that Brother Williams puts in his windshield? Did he got one in there? Yeah, he got one in there. He, he, he puts this, this thing in his windshield to keep the heat, the sun from messing up the dashboard. He said, we had one of them things like that in the plane. He said, I put it over the dashboard, over the window. So the guy couldn't see nothing. The only thing that forced him to have to trust his instrumentation. You ain't hearing me. See, some folks, even though the instrumentation is there, they still looking out the window. Y'all ain't understand. They, they, not, they not catching me. Second Corinthians 5 and 7 says this, for we walk by which is our instrumentation and not by sight. See, some of y'all, you, you, you speak the word. You're looking at your instrumentation, but you're also looking out at the situation and the circumstance. All right. mm -hmm. And what happens is your, your life goes in your most prevalent thought. You keep looking at that, 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 that stuff yeah. instead of looking at what the word of God say. Yeah. Thank God for Sister Cheryl being in the shower, I heard. Because we tried to cancel that thing twice. We was, we, we, it wasn't we was, we were battling. Call Sister Melissa, should we do this? Should we not do this? Oh, man, this is messed up. I can't drive that car tonight, especially on the freeway. We're we going back and forth. Then I heard Sister Melissa, she was saying, yeah. And Sister Sessler, she don't even like to drive on the freeway. I said, oh, God. <laughs> See, I'm just dealing with the night stuff. She said night and freeway. I can hear them on their phone. And I'm like, oh, God, what are we going to do? And I'm trying to think, okay, I got my truck here. I've got to put it. I got to park it at the airport. How can I get back home? What can I drive this? But still, I'm still stuck with one car, yeah. one vehicle. Call Sister Cheryl. Sister Melissa said, OK. Me and Renee talking it out. We're at the car rental place. We still talking it out. No, don't call Sister Cheryl. Don't don't cancel it. We call Sister Cheryl. She didn't pick up. Call Sister Melissa again. Calls Sister Cheryl again. I don't know how we arrived at the fact that, okay, if there's a way that we can get home without getting on the freeway, we'll drive both these cars. I don't know how we went there. It's because we've never driven the streets to the airport. It's get on the 60 and get there. You know? And we, we, we decided to do it. And I told, we talked about how beautiful the cars was last week. Beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, we look, I mean, I felt like a Barack Obama. <laughs> Presidential limousine. Beautiful. Yeah, they were beautiful. We pull up in the parking lot and I can see Sister, Sister Cheryl and Sister Carolyn looking at her. I said, that's the look. That's why. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They think, who is that? That's us. Let me get back to my point. The point being, we had, a set, we had several opportunities to go by sight. But at the last minute, we walked by faith. We looked at the instrumentation. See, you know what got it? We weren't going to go. We said, but yeah, but they bought out that the other church is a small church too. And they've invested. And we can't be hurting them. We're going to have to do this. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I found out, she said, Sister Cheryl said, I would have canceled it, but I was in the shower. I didn't pick up, she didn't catch the phone call. Yeah. So God set all that up. Yeah. Amen. 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 The flight instruments is the word. What does the word say? Y'all want to go deeper now? What does the word say? Does the word say? Don't be disturbed. Y'all want to go deeper? Go to, go to uh, Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Come on. Genesis chapter 26. You, you with me, Abdulia? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Genesis chapter 26. Don't be disturbed. Got up this morning. Well, last night I got a text message. Pastor, I'm coming in late. I ain't going to make it to church. Got a text message this morning. I mean, yesterday another one. I won't be at church tomorrow. Got another text message. Pastor, I ain't coming today. No reasons. <laughs> you know, 
But I do appreciate one thing. When folks not going to come, I prefer a text message than a phone call. It, 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 it does something different to my spirit when the phone because, you know, because I'm still trying to deal with the word. You know, and so when the people calling me, it's like uh, that messes with me. But the text message is, is better, much better. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, the enemy be trying to, oh, Lord, how are we going to do this here? How are we going to do that there? Oh, uh, huh? But it worked out right. Yeah. Elder Oliver took it. I said, that's a pastor right there. Yes, sir. That brother gave us. Y'all probably bored with my message because he, he preached this, the offering. <laughs> Didn't he preach? Yeah, yeah you, did. you did. Brother, don't take it negative. Did a good job. Amen. Great job. Amen. Great job. And I'm, I'm really flowing in that. Amen. Believe it. Even though I'm not doing a lot of hollering, the spirit of the Lord is in here oh, yeah. and he ain't done speaking. Hallelujah. Dude, you plowed the field. Yes. And that's what that's what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the word can go, come forth. Yeah. Amen. And you, did you receive that word, Jervis? Yes, it's going to backfire on him. Yeah. It's going to backfire on him. Yeah. Did you receive that word, Patrick? Hold your peace. Yeah, listen, you're on your way, my brother. You're on your way. You, 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 I feel the Holy Spirit. Your business is, 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 is going to expand. Listen, 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 listen. Don't count yourself out on the little stuff. The plane is just taking off. It's just taking off. Are you, are you catching what I'm saying? Sometimes we give folk a word. We tell them what to do. But they keep looking out the window. Instead of looking, looking and believing what we done told them. And so they don't move. Well, this ain't came in place and that didn't fall in place yet. And this didn't fall in place. And since that ain't fall in place, I don't believe I can do it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. See, that's one thing about the word. When you receive a word, the word will do the job its own self. Your job is just to believe. Amen, amen. amen somebody. Amen. amen. Are we in Genesis chapter 26? Verse 1. Don't be disturbed. Are you with me? Amen. And there was a famine in the land. Folk running around the day, they talking about the main, the main thing with the president election is the economy. Don't y'all be saying that. No. And there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, into, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Boom. Point number one. The command of God or the word of God, when it is obeyed, it brings an automatic blessing. Amen. Automatic. Go not down into Egypt. That was the command. Stay right where you're at. That was the command. Don't move. That was the command. Never mind the famine. I'm your God. Sojourn in this land. Act like you own it. And I will be with thee. I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, unto you and unto thy seed, yeah. you going to get, I will give all these countries. Yeah. Right now you ain't got no place to hardly stay. Uh -huh. But God says, I'm going to give you the whole country. Y'all right. right. ain't hearing me. Yeah. And then he says, and I'm going to perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Yeah. Do you hear me? Elder Oliver, yeah. when you start talking about Abraham this morning, yeah. that let me know, I'm on, I, hey, I'm looking at my instruments now. Yeah. I know I'm in the house. Yeah. Glory to Jesus' name. 
See, the deal is, church, body of Christ, children of God, sons of God, blood-bought, redeemed. Come on, somebody. We ain't supposed to be looking at what they looking at. They can keep their charts. They can keep their statistics. We got a more sure word of prophecy. We walking in the blessing. And that's why I'm going to stay. I'm not going to be flying, my God, like a wing, on, on a wing like an eagle, looking at the, all the other stuff. I'm going to keep my eyes on the instruments. The instruments call me blessed. The instruments call me prosperous. The, when the instruments call me, come on, somebody, an overcomer. It calls me, a, it calls me victorious. It calls me above only, not beneath. It calls me blessed in the city and in the suburbs. It calls me blessed, praise God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Don't get it twisted, glory to God. The place ain't blessed, it's you that's blessed. It's you. The blessing is on you. You're the covenant person. You're the glue. That you, you, you're the glue that's holding everything on your job together. Some of y'all don't realize your job can't prosper if you ain't there. Turn on. You're the one causing that job to prosper because you, you got a blessed man up in there. There's a covenant person up in there. Come on, somebody. And God, come on, come on, come on, come on. And God is going to make somebody real. I'm talking to somebody. Somebody's been getting messed with on the job. somebody been getting bothered on the job. And God says, I'm going to call some folk to recognize. He said, I did it for Nebuchadnezzar. I turned it around. I made Nebuchadnezzar acknowledge, glory to God, that I am God, hallelujah, I can, I can hear, I don't care how hot it might get, I can put an air conditioner in the middle of the furnace, the Bible says not nothing on their clothes was burned, their hats wasn't burned, their hosen wasn't burned, their garments wasn't burned, come on somebody, God is going to bring you out of this thing, like you've never been in the thing, will somebody give him some praise, up Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, it's the counsel of God. His counsel is going to give you stability when all the world around you is shaking. Hallelujah. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Evil tidings will not be able to steal your peace. No, how come somebody say, how come? Because you a peacemaker. You a peacemaker. So when crazy get around you, something inside of you knows how to make peace. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. It opens prison doors and sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well, within my soul. Spring up, oh well, and make me whole. Spring up, oh well, and give to me the life abundantly. I'm a peacemaker. In other words, I got the power to create peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All I got to say is what Jesus said to the winds and the waves. Peace be still. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm not done preaching. I'm trying to preach this thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory. So I feel a part two of last week coming on me. Somebody shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glo Sit down. 
Sit down. Glory. 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 That's right, Obdulia. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 When you obey the word of God, it brings a blessing. Glory to God. Let me skip over to a couple of verses. Go to verse 12. Verse 12. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. The Holy Ghost is talking, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the next thing is getting ready to gonna send a blessing over on this side of the room. Hallelujah. Something big is coming over here. I said something big is coming over here. Something big, something big is coming over here. And hey, don't try to jump up and run over there. But something big is something big is, is happening over here now. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Oh, cause you on this side of the room. Come on and praise him. You on this side of the room. Come on and praise him. Bless him. Bless him. Come on this side of the room. Act like you believe it. Act like you believe it. Look at Reggie. Reggie done creeped over on this side of the room. See, 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 see. Some of y'all let somebody want to let anybody stop your blood. If, if somebody, it's like. John done came out of the room. John done came out of the John. Hey! 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 Somebody help Carolyn get over there. Hallelujah. Help her get over there. Help Mother Dixon get over there. There's a blessing in this room. Glory to God. Glory, glory. Help her. Don't want to take your time, Mother. Glory. To, there's enough blessing for all of us. There's enough for all of us. Praise the Lord. 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 Get loud. Get loud! Get loud! Get loud! See what just happened? Well, let me tell you what just happened. Your mind got off your problem and it got on the Lord. And when your mind got on the Lord, the thoughts of evil, the, 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 the thoughts of God begin to immediately rise up and begin to rebuke the evil tidings that's trying to take root in your life. I feel something. Somebody, something broke. Something broke. Something broke. Something broke. I'm trying to finish my message. Something broke. Something broke. Something broke. Something broke. Something broke. Something just broke. Something broke. Jump. I'm trying to preach my message. Something broke up in this place. Hallelujah. He said, Take your time, sir. He said, I'm trying to finish my message, but y'all pushing on me too hard. Hey, the Bible said that Isaac sold. He didn't care what they said the economy was doing. He gave anyway he gave when it looked like he couldn't give he gave somebody got bills due but you gave anyway somebody got some stuff that broke on them but they gave anyway somebody needs your car fixed but you gave anyway somebody needs a house but you gave anyway somebody gave anyway is there anybody in here who gave anyway is there any, any anybody in here some anyway givers i'm gonna give anyway in the name of jesus because i believe god that he can bless me any way he want to so i gave a anyway seed i gave my anyway yes 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 I'm behind on some stuff but I'm gonna bless him anyway anybody gonna bless him anyway get back to y'all seat now I ain't done preaching don't try to get hot loud on me trying to catch your football game I got some word for somebody somebody getting ready to get a blessing I'm gonna work this Hallelujah, Shere Mohose. He said, Karamanda. 
and the Moshe Kanda Bakata Kata Dono Moshe He Shay Katonda Did you anoint her? Did you anoint her? This one right here, he did. He shaka. You ready? You ready? He shake on Motalabaka. Shine it on the boat. She can shake on the Mosha. Anyway, he shake on the Lobo. Hand on the Lobo. Shake. Hiya. Go to him. You go get him. Go get him. He shake. He shake. He shake. He shake. He shake. He shake. I hear the Lord saying don't give up I hear the Lord saying don't give up don't give up don't give up God says as long as you don't give up I don't give up he God says I you're the pilot you are com come on don't you give up don't you give up speak Sing to your business. Sing to the front door. Pour some oil around the sidewalk. Bring them in in Jesus' name. Hey! 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 I bless your business. Contracts. You looking for one contract? I speak contracts. 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 I'm trying to get done with my message, but I'm speaking contracts. 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 Hallelujah. Shell. I'm a high. Hey. Because God, your word, your word, here's your instrument panel. For God is able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all we could ever ask or imagine according to the power that worketh in us. Glory to God. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Y'all yeah. gonna let me finish preaching? Yeah. Hallelujah. No, I'm not gonna be discourteous to what this for, for the spirit. But I got I got some more preaching to do. I got some more. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. I got some more preaching to do. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. You leading them to the Lord. He's received Jesus as a savior before. You did? Okay. I, I just, I'm just want to make sure. Okay. Okay. Amen. God bless you. All right. I got to finish preaching. I know this is different. We're going to give an altar call in a minute. But I got, I got a, somebody need this here. I got something for him. Glory. Somebody say Glory. 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 Isaac sold in the land. What land? The land that God told him to stay in. He sold in that land. He sold. Even though it was a famine. A famine mean ain't no rain. Listen. Listen. So he planted some seed. Believing for rain. He planted seed. Based on what God said. God said I'm going to bless you. Understand something. Them people. They were agricultural people. So, so, so when, when, the, when the Lord spoke a blessing. It was the expectation that rain got to come. On my stuff. Now I don't know about you across the street. But right here. In my immediate vicinity. Every place my feet go. Y'all ain't hearing me. I feel like preaching. Every place my feet go. Come on, somebody. In other words, are we bowing for Moses and Joshua now? Every place my feet go is blessed. Praise God. So he sold in the land. And the, the Bible says the Lord blessed him. Uh-huh. It says, and the man waxed great. What he, in other words, he grew. In other words, wherever he was at in stature and in uh, 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 prosperity, it got greater and greater and greater and went forward. Somebody say forward. forward. 
didn't go backward. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And grew until he became great, very great. I, for the sake of time, I got to let you know this. Abimelech them, glory to God. They got jealous. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. They got jealous. How come? Because Isaac was starting to be blessed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says Isaac had all kind of sheep. He had all kind of goats and cattle and everything. He was blessed blessed and the Philistines got jealous the Bible says they envied him and then, then, then Isaac went to dig up some well because listen here when you got cattle you gotta water them and so he went to dig up the well that his brother Abraham had dug but the Bible says when he went to dig the wells up Abimelech them they came and started giving them some trouble there's somebody up in here see the devil tries to discourage you when you get ready when you get started to do the right thing all of a sudden the devil comes to try to dissuade you from continuing in the way in the thing that God gave you to do but I'm here to tell somebody don't you give up hope you just keep on working that thing because you can't, don't grow weary right now because God's going to work everything out for your good I prophesy to somebody up in here you're in a straight betwixt the two you don't know whether to stop or keep going but I'm going to help you God God said keep on going. God said keep on moving. God said don't you give up. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to throw in the towel. This is the time to dig in your heels. My God and set yourself. This is the time in the name of Jesus to set your face like a flint. Act like you're in Chicago in the windy city. Get your hat, get your lean on. So Come on, somebody, because you're going to make it. Y'all ain't going to help me. Listen, so it says he dug the well, and they begin to give him trouble. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First of all, they cast him away from him. You're much greater than us. Sounds familiar. Shut the border. Too many of them are coming. Shut the border. No, 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 no. So you got to understand the devil always used that same fear tactic. He used it with the Israelites. Kill the firstborn. Get rid of them. Why? Because they having more people than us. Y'all don't want to help me preach up in this place. Y'all don't want to help me preach up in this place. And so Emimelech tried to get rid of them. And so Isaac went and dug the well that his father Abraham dug. And then there was a strife between Isaac's herdmen, hallelujah, and them, and them Philistines. He said, they, and, and they came up there talking about, that water's ours. Punk them out of their water. Y'all ain't going to help me up in there. Hallelujah. Punk them out of their stuff. Praise the Lord. And so, but look what Isaac. See, Isaac ain't like Abraham. Abraham been there and put up a fight. But Isaac, he had a, he had a, a, a he knew, he, he, he kept looking at his instrument panel. He had a word from God. I'm in the land that I was told to be in. And so a blessing is on me. If a blessing is on me, why I got to fight with you? I ain't got to fight with you. Because the Lord is going to fight my battle. Maybe he had a prophetic word for some centuries ahead. Victory, victory, shout. Yeah. If I just hold and let the Lord victory shall be mine. And so, glory to God. And so, he, 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 he called that well Esek. And then he went someplace else, glory to God. And he digged another well. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. It says he digged another well. And then they strove with him over that well. He didn't get ugly. He didn't get into fisticuffs. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And so, because he, listen, listen to me, y'all. When a person get ugly over some stupid stuff like some economy, you know what that means? That means they don't trust that God. They think God is about to run out of something but when you know that God never runs out when you know that the gold and the silver belong to God when you know that God got enough clientele for you when you know Patrick when you know there are suitable customers for you when you know when you know when you know when you know but in my father's house, there are many men. When you know. When you know. When you know. That's the question. Do you know? See, when you know. They dig to no 
another well. And they called it sitting. And they removed from this. They said, okay, y'all starting mess. Oh, they removed from this. And they dig another well. They digged another well. See, some of y'all, the devil trying to make you give up on the first attempt. He tried to get you on the second attempt. But you got to, my God, we have a determination. I said, you got to have a determination. You got to have a made up mind. I'm going to do this. Somebody look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. let's do this. Let's do look to another neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. let's do this. Yeah. And he removed from thence and digged another well and for that well they strove not and he called the name of the place Rehoboth 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 it means spaciousness it means room it means enough clean air y'all ain't hearing me more than enough I ain't get, come on somebody enough land for me to expand my, my enterprise. Y'all ain't hear me up in this place. Enough places for me to, what am I, the word I'm looking for? Give my pitch about my product. Y'all ain't hear me up in this place. Enough folks, Sister, Sister Turner, that want their hair done. A, a, enough chairs for somebody else to come in and rent. Y'all ain't hearing me up in this place. Enough. Uh, 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 enough time for some more preachers to come in here and preach. Y you ain't hearing me. Rehoboth. I ain't got to do it all by myself. Now, every once in a while, I can take a rest. Every once in a while, I can take a break. Y'all ain't hearing me. Spaciousness. I, I, I hear, uh oh, I saw you. Hey, listen, more thoughts. You know what? You catch that? More th no, I'm talking to her, the one that's on directly behind you. More thoughts, more ideas, more writing, more words, more chapters. You're not stuck. Dig some more. Dig some more. Dig some more. For y'all preachers in here, when you get brain fog, when it seems like you're stuck, don't know what else to do. To, to, what, what else? To, dig some more. Dig some more. Dig some more. I was talking to Brother Hunt yesterday. And I said, you know, sometimes I could just get, I put on, put on me a football game, turn the volume down. I'm not really caring about the team that's playing. Especially college, I don't care nothing about that. But I turned on uh, 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 Colorado and Colorado State. You knew I was going to see, she a mess. Deion Sanders. So I turned it on. It was a blowout. But I got some ideas. Got some ideas. Keep on trying. I, we don't know why Dion's doing that. It's near the end of the game. They're already run. Why is he trying? Because he's keeping on trying. You ain't hearing me up in this place. I'm, come on, so I'm not going to let you off the hook. You talked about me real bad last week when Nebraska whooped us bad. So now we're going to come on, somebody. We're going we gonna, to we gonna extend. We, gonna, we don't care. We're trying to go for the gusto. We're we going to keep trying. We're going for the juggler up in here. We're trying to build our program. So some other number, you know, some five-star recruits can come up in here. So they dug another well. And they said, for now the Lord has made room for us. Brother Oliver, look at your wife. Tell her, say, baby, it's our time now. Abdulia, look at Jose Luis. Look at him. Say, say Jose Luis. <laughs> Ask him first, do you believe it? Ask him, do you believe it? Say, it's our time now. It's our time. It's our time now. It's our time now. It's our time now. It's our time now. Uh, Y'all see, they don't understand. They think I'm just talking. Uh, uh, John, don't mess up the video. Come on out there and talk to your wife. Hallelujah. Tell your, tell your, tell your grandson, don't touch that thing. 
It's our time. Look at him. <laughs> oh, we just started a mess up in. Don't you? Hey, we in church. Hey. All right, now somebody give God some praise up in this place. Hey. See, that's how it got to be. See that, Ray? Renee, it's our time. It's our time now. Come on, somebody. We've been through the fire. We've been to the flood. But God's going to bring us into our wealthy place. Now somebody give him some praise.